ladies and gentlemen this is the truth tv show on tremit online tv if you haven't yet subscribed make sure that you subscribe this is a very um, um, um scarce information that we are giving you on this channel you will not ha ha you not find this kind of discussions anywhere you will not find it in the academy because they wouldn't want to tell you the truth so if you have gotten a channel that presents nothing but the truth i think that you will do yourself a greater good if you if you subscribe and then you also share it to, to your friends and make sure that you invite more people onto this uh, platform because we are in informing you we are also educating you and we are presenting you the truth and then we are doing that um on biasly okay so like i told you this this um program is, is sponsored by trembit executive and staff training institute test now some of the courses include um, operations supply chain and total management and of course also include banking and finance and of course also include social enterprise and non-for-profit management political governance and development economics now you can be rest assured now considering the kind of discussion that we are having here what do you think will be in for you if we should enroll in any of these programs that should let you know that we are doing something which is very different from what is done in the mainstream academy with all their structures and all that we are doing something which tends to stimulate your ability to think and be innovative and be creative and then we have overwhelming evidence to to prove what we are saying and um, so you can enroll in any of these courses and then you can call our, our, our lines you know you can see the advert right there on the screen you can see the advert and all that so back to you polymer um, i want to find out from you the um, general relevance of tertiary education to national development um relevant question um i will start by saying and so the question what is the general relevance of tertiary education to national development i will start um by looking at the first relevance we can look at it through the perspective of human capital theory okay so the first relevance of tertiary education is that it contributes to intellectual capital development it contributes to intellectual capital development now what is intellectual capital intellectual capital um is an amalgamation of the knowledge the skills the values the creativities the innovations okay that um people are able to acquire and accumulate as a result of um, some form of rigorous education and training that they receive so intellectual capital is very important from the human capital theory perspective because we know it theoretically that it contributes positively okay to economic development all other things being equal countries with superior intellectual capital are going to perform better than those who don't have it and that is why for example you see you see um in in classical um economics okay we have um the cobb douglas production function which postulates that economic growth is basically a function of um, um capital it's a non-linear function of capital k and then um labor l and of course um a, a, a term a which is called the total factor productivity okay but solo and swan were able to show us that intellectual capital was very key in um, driving economic growth because um, a country with a well-developed intellectual capital will have an edge when it comes to creativity and innovation and so you see that technology is very key is a very key driver of economic growth countries and nations which are able to um, develop and deploy innovative technologies are always having an edge over those which don't and so today in countries like japan you know and china um the reason why they are successful is is largely the extent of technology okay but how how did they develop the technology technology itself is a direct result okay of intellectual capital and if you read the story of countries like japan and china etc you will see the decisions that some of their leaders took years back to develop the intellectual capital of the youth and to tap into their expertise for national development i must say that um ghana's tertiary educational system is not performing very well in terms of developing intellectual capital 
I mean, we have already highlighted that many of the graduates do not have their skill set. The knowledge, do they have knowledge at all? We don't have the time to really go into the dimensions of knowledge. But it turns out that um, many of what they call knowledge is basically theoretical and is based on things they have, they have achieved and memorized. It's not based on practical or applied knowledge. So there is theoretical knowledge and there is applied knowledge. Many of our graduates do not have you know, a grasp or mastery over applied knowledge. So application is a problem for many of the graduates. So they come to the job, you tell them to do things, they can't do it. And it's not their fault. Because the people who instructed them, the professors in the academy, many of them are just like their students. The, the caliber of graduates we have in the industry are a mirror reflection of the caliber of instructors in the academy. So if the youth are unemployed, okay, I can tell you this. If we shut down all the tertiary institutions, the professors will be unemployed just as the youth are unemployed including those of entrepreneurship yes because they can't do it these guys teaching the academy are being paid by government and even when government delays or refuses to pay their research allowance they'll go on strike they wouldn't teach students are they serious as an instructor you are supposed to lead by example you are supposed to inculcate the spirit the sense of national citizens which i mentioned it before the sense of national and corporate and even global citizenship in students, okay? It's part of the ethic that you have to inculcate in your students. But you're a professor, when government delays in paying your research grant, you go on strike. What, what are you teaching the students? So you're teaching the students that when they also find themselves out there, whether in the corporate world or wherever, if their employer is not paying certain things, they should also go on strike. That's what we are instilling the students. But you see, in the end, it only tells you that many of the academics are never productive themselves. They can't succeed on their own. Without government grants and loans and support, they can't succeed. And that's how pathetic it is. Of course, I don't want to talk about creativity and innovation, okay? Because you know that there are a lot of students um, with master's degree, you know, in computer science and IT, <laughs> who can set up a simple website using Wix.com okay and i don't want to talk about the professors who taught them because that's for the professors who taught them they're even worse off okay so today some of the 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 the, the experts in the industry they are industry trends okay so today you see some of the experts in the industry doing a lot of things with tools like wordpress okay now some of the experts will tell you that what Word, wordpress is relatively easier i don't think it's easier it's because they are experts that's why they are saying it that way Look, but in the, in the academy, you would hardly find a professor who knows anything about WordPress. And everything. No, can they teach you how to say create a website? They can't. They cannot do that. So, you see, we have a serious problem. So, the, 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 the portion of creativity and innovation is very um, critical to national development, unfortunately, um it's, it's it's to a large extent missing so the 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 the, the first relevance of um, um education that's tertiary education to na national development is that it contributes to intellectual capital and intellectual capital now becomes the engine of economic growth so quality tertiary education is is certainly very key to national development now the i want to move on to the second relevance, but i don't know if you you wanted to say something but i saw you taking some notes Otherwise, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I want to um, add up to what you said, okay. and then probably if you, if you also um, expound on that. Okay. Speaking about how the the students are a mirror reflection of their professors or lecturers, I think um, we were tested with a clear um, incident when there was a global pandemic, and then the educational institution had to move online. We saw how we struggled to move our education online because we are so much detached from global trends and dynamics. That was when we were trying to move online. And then we got to know anything about virtual online education. And then you have the sad part of it is that some of our major universities could not even move online. So the students had to go home 
Meanwhile, these students are, um, these, these schools or universities are running computer programs. So those doctors or professors who are heads of the computer science department and all that, what was their relevance then? When some of the students had to go home, I don't know if I can mention them that institution, when they had to go home, which that institution is supposed to represent um, um, science and technology, but they had to go home and wait till whenever before they had to resume to go and continue education. So what, what you are saying is, is just uh, uh, um, right, right on, on a spot. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a shame. I, I don't know why you are afraid to mention it. I mean, this is, this is open, an open secret. I mean, we are talking about KNUST. Mm -hmm. It's a shame to the faculty members at the KNUST, not only them, Legon, University of Ghana. University of Ghana pretended to be ahead of KNUST <laughs> by deploying a certain system and some people who do not know about the system would have thought that it was the University of Ghana who, who, de who developed it, Sakai. Yes, Sakai. Sakai was not created by the University of Ghana. It was created by a private company. Oh, okay. So I what is the use? <laughs> yes, Sakai is not owned by the University of Ghana. They have, they, they have subscribed to that platform and they are paying to that company. There are a lot of other investors anyway. You know, it means the trend is almost global. The problem is global because they, I saw other investors apart from the University of Ghana, who are also on the Sakai platform, mm -hmm. who also use it for, you know, e-learning and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the question is, so what is the use of the computer science department at the University of Ghana? Yeah. What are they doing? It needs to be shut down. They are wasting national resources. That's true. Yes, what is their use? So it's a shame that you have departments of computer science and id and they cannot create an e-learn system or portal for the university mm -hmm. and the university has to spend money to pay a private company and they are, they are training students who also pass out to be like them of course i know a young man who has a master's degree in it okay who cannot develop a website who can do anything? He doesn't do anything about graphic design. He doesn't do anything about Excel. He, he can't do anything, but he has paper. He has a master of science degree in IT. Hmm. Doc, how what is he doing? He's unemployed. Yeah. How are the, the biomedical department as well? Because when COVID nineteen also became very topical, people were discussing it. So we're expecting to see um, those in academy to come up with 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 um, startling research about it. Well, I don't want to go into what they claim they did because we know it's controversial that they came and then they, they presented some kind of report and we know where, where they got information from. So we have a biomedical engineering or whatever department in certain universities. But when the COVID-19 issue became topical, we we're still relying on foreign information and that they couldn't really do anything about it. They couldn't, they couldn't um, dig in, in, into the matter. They couldn't do anything about it. So I think that, that it, it is very problematic um, that the issue of education that we are discussing today. That's what yes, yeah. yes, yes, and I'm sure that um, later in our discussions, at the point you highlighted, would we'll, we'll naturally gravitate us towards another aspect of education, which is research mm -hmm. and development. Mm -hmm. Okay, we call it R and D. We also look at that, and then you also see the problem we have as a country, because um, a, a simple way of uh, measuring government's priority, okay, is to look at the items on the face of the national accounts and de deflate them by GDP. So, for example, you, you can check whether government prioritizes research and development by looking at the data on research and development, dividing it by GDP and expressing it as a percentage. And you see what percentage of GDP <laughs> goes into research and development. I must tell you that if you go to the World Development Indicators website and you want data on research and development in Ghana, for several years, you won't get it. It's blank. Yeah, it tells you that Ghana as a country does not take research and development very seriously. No wonder why they won't pay the research grant, mm -hmm. you know, to, to the university <laughs> professors and they also go on strike. 